In my last episode of my working LEGO bowling alley, we got everything ready to program, so let's begin. To begin, we have to plug in all the cables, and to do so, I bought a bunch of custom ones that are a little longer and much more flexible. Well, that's a mess. Now that we have all the motors and sensors hooked up, we can begin programming. And this is going to take a long time. Up first, I was able to create a test program. So if we take a pen and we'll just throw it back in there somewhere. And then let's hit start on this program. It's gonna turn on a bunch of motors. And then once that gets picked up, it's gonna eventually hit the button way up there and it should shut it all off. There we go. But testing this with the bowling ball did not go so well. So I definitely just found an issue. I tested the ball one more time and here we can see how easy it is to lift this up. We installed this bar here hoping it would stop that but the bar is only held in by one pin over there, so it's just a pivot point. Like the original episode I started this in, this took a whole lot of attempts. And I tried restructuring the support beams, but that just didn't really work. The ball still couldn't even get to the chain. So I decided we'll get to turn the chain 90 degrees, and that should help the ball. As well as let's make the treads into a stair step so it's downhill, and the ball should roll right into the chain. So the tracks work now, but when I try and have a ball go to the other side, it kind of gets stuck sometimes and goes under or something like that, and it seems to be between the split of the tracks. With some more minor adjustments like those green tiles, it finally works, so let's give it an official test. And it finally works. With the ball return now working, let's focus on another issue. The pins are too weak. Even on carpet, they break. So I mentioned in the first video that I may use tubes, these thinner ones, inside of the pins instead of the axles that currently are there. I bought two sizes of the tubes because I was unsure which one would fit better, but I went with the smaller ones. So let's get to work with the rest of them. But instead of a boring time lapse, let's move on. So we now have the pins a lot stronger. I was testing the pins and the bowling ball in there and stuff's still getting caught. So let's continue to work in here until we finally got everything working smoothly. Adding these yellow springs not only provides tension onto the ball, but it also keeps it from breaking. And as we can see here from the test, it works perfectly. With the ball shoot now working, I decided to move on to testing where the pins are getting stuck and maybe the ball as well. By running the pins through the machine a lot of times, we can see anywhere it's getting stuck and make improvements there. From those tests, I decided to add this gray divider as well as add a couple other walls and things so that way the pins aren't flying out as well as they're getting pushed away from where they would interfere with the ball. Before we really move on, we do have to test this with all the pins and the bowling ball to make sure it would actually work. And it seemed like everything was going to go well until I tested it. All the pins jammed and the ball didn't really go where it needed to go. Well, that just went terribly. Time for a whole lot more testing. So I worked on that for a long time and I still can't get things working. So instead of actually fixing them, we're going to put those problems off for another day and come back to them. And that's exactly what I did. So I installed sensors like this one that connect to our first EV3 brick because that program relies on those sensors to know when to run. So when this carriage moves side to side controlled by our second EV3 brick, it would correspond to that sensor which is controlled by that first brick. So that way we're able to communicate. Next up, we need to be able to detect once this goes down and up. 
To do that, I added a color sensor that can detect the difference between when it's looking at the white bricks on the back and then when that moves down and it would see the red bricks. And with two more sensors in place, we'll be ready to program. One to detect when that last pin is in and one to detect when there's one on the treads. So right now, pins come out here and then would go onto this track upon request from when this is under the light sensor. So I wrote a simple program that would allow us to test this. It starts by just having the conveyor belt spin slowly until it sees a pin. Then it should deliver it to that hole. And it works. Now we'd have to program the other nine. Having the motors in XY directions allowed this programming to be a whole lot easier while it did still take quite a bit of time. For each one, it still waits for that sensor, and then once it delivers that top pin, which currently in the program is the first pin, but we'll move that to the last pin, it would tell it to then move down and up the carriage. So here is the first test of all 10 pins. This video is sped up two times to not bore you guys. So first it'll do that top pin, which again will be moved to activate the last pin so that sensor detects it last. And then it's going to do the other rows. And in here in a bit, you'll see that it missed the last two pins. We're going to fix that in the program with a couple tweaks and then it'll be all good. So this pin, I'm still unsure what happened to it. It was properly lined up, give or take a little bit and it just missed the hole completely still. So I rewrote the program here in a minute, so that way it was completely lined up, and this one, the program was way off to where the motor was actually jamming and I had to fix it mid-program. So now with the modified program to do just pins nine and 10, and with the rotations set a little differently, it should bring them to where they actually need to be. And there we go, it works. With that second program finalized, let's go on to the third one. This will be a simple program that can flip those pins up and then drop the carriage down. So let's give it a test. And it dropped the pins. And it jammed. So I tweaked the program slightly and now let's see if we can bring the carriage down. So, something bad happened. As it turns out, I had the motor going the wrong direction. So now, with that fixed, it's able to go down. It's kind of slanted right now, so we'll just over torque that one corner so that way it's level. And it can go all the way down and clear the pin sweep. So now, let's add the ability to pick up and drop the pins, as well as program the pin sweep into it. The program now waits for that front pin to be in place. And now, once it goes down, it'll release the pins, and then go back up. This is trial 1, and as you can see, it did not work too well. After a whole lot of testing, I finally got it able to work. So it can now pick up the pins and release the pins. So here's that test, and then after this, we're going to go on to the pin sweep. This clip is sped up two times, but now it's able to go down, and then pick up that pin, bring that pin all the way back up, and then it can go back down, and then it can release that pin, and bring the carriage right back up. With this finally done, it's time to move on to the pin sweep, and... Side of the pin sweep just doesn't work. I've tried a whole lot of things, including adding wheels here, etc. But what if we completely change it, and instead of having the motor move the pin sweep, let's have the motor itself be the pin sweep. So using that idea, I designed a whole new pin sweep, with the motor in the center of the actual bar and having axle rods going out both sides with gears on the top and bottom to connect to rails. So hopefully, those gear sets on the right side would connect to gear racks that would be able to move it side to side, then that gear on the left is able to spin and move it up and down. 
One of the biggest parts of the last episode was the pin sweep itself, and it seems like this episode is no different, as it is just not working at all. This new one, I got to work a little bit, but I had to redo just about everything. And with the trip to the Lego store, I had the pieces I needed to continue to work on this. But not all of them. I ran out of gear racks, so I ordered some of those and they'll be here in about a week or maybe two weeks. So we got that railing in, but that's gonna be a problem. We do not have the clearance to have a rail above that when that goes down. So we may have to extend this part over and have the rail way over there. So right now, it can move and then it kind of can go up. As it turned out, I lied, that can't really go up at all. So I redid quite a bit of it and added much more gears and a wheel as a guide. So as you can see here, if I hold the left side to support it like it has the gears on both sides, it can move pretty well. But when I'm not really guiding it, it kind of just destroys itself. And with quite a few improvements, I can get it to go all the way up and then it can go down, but getting it over or over then up is really difficult. That transition is not smooth. So testing a few things like this, which has this bar that can go up and down, adds tension to it switching directions. It would then go over and then be shoved upwards off of those treads like that. And then it would continue up. That mechanism of having a smoother transition where it wants to get forced to transition really helped, but it still wasn't perfect. As here's a time lapse of me trying to get that to really work, but it just wasn't quite there. I needed one in the X direction and the Y direction. And the space I had to work with was too small. So I tried it with the seesaw mechanism, but that didn't work either. So I scrapped that idea and eventually I thought of this. So I think I figured it out. I was going to use a teeter-totter mechanism kind of where it would have switched it to going up and then when it came down it would switch it to go to the side but instead I realized we can use planetary gears which are just normal gears but they can spin around each other like this if you hold one of the gears still. So let me implement this and show you how it works. Using gears as planetary gears just means that you can hold one stationary while the other ones rotate around it. And we can use that in our pin sweep, as we could hold the one still while the pin sweep sweeps upwards. But when we release that and have that top one attached to gear racks, it would sweep back and forth. So if it hits a limit, like it sweeps all the way forward, it would then not be able to spin anymore, so it would be locked and the sweep would raise. Same thing for lowering. So if we have the motor on the bottom gear, and that can be part of the pin sweep itself, then have a chain of gears going up to the top, it should work. And we'll just copy that on both sides like I did here. So with all the gears in, now we can see that if we power this motor, it'll spin these gears. These two gears would be the ones that would move it forwards and backwards. Now, if I hold this gear and power the motor, it is not quite strong enough to be able to lift itself up fully. In an attempt to solve that problem, I matched an 8 tooth gear with a 24 tooth gear to give me a 1 third ratio, but it wasn't strong enough. And then an 8 tooth and a 48 tooth gear, and it still wasn't strong enough. So eventually, I got a little smarter and put the motor towards the top. And I attached a chain from the motor to the bottom gear, so that way the weight of the motor is up by the pivot point and it still spins those bottom gears. We can see that it can still spin those top gears. If we hold the axle, it can now lift itself up. Currently, the chain is skipping a little bit, but that's an easy fix. And that's a 1 to 1 gear ratio. So if we reduce that down, it would be even easier for it. That'll do it for today's episode. With this proof of concept underway, I feel very confident that we'll be able to finish all the programming in our next episode. So be sure to subscribe as it's the best way to support me and it's always free. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.